Who was on your committee? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember all the names, but Sylvia Hamilton, who's a black filmmaker from New Brunswick, and Chris Creighton Kelly, who is um, uh, an artist and, and consultant from Vancouver, the two that are still in my brain. I'd have to go over my notes, but the, the, the important thing was that we, we discovered that Canada Council did not have um, a council-wide definition of peer, which is a, or, the, and they did not have a council-wide definition of jury. So what this meant was all their literature said that, you, you know, arts projects were, um, uh, and decisions were made through peer assessment, right, or through juries. No definition of peer. What we discovered is, for instance, in the theater section, that the officers included themselves as peers. Now you think about that for right. a second. Yeah, yeah, they considered yeah. themselves as peers, so that and that they're, they 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 uh, they 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 were any theater application that was going into Canada Council um, was uh, assessed by a peer assessment committee, and they included themselves as peers. But the peer assessment committee was not a jury. A jury made a final decision, including funding and the amounts. Peer assessment committees apparently only made recommendations. So you could, as an artist at that time, sit on a Canada Council jury, leave, convinced that you had that funding was secured for this black Canadian theater production, and then they did not get the grant. Because the officers could simply change it. And they did on a fairly regular basis. Do you know why they changed it? Can you guess? It seemed to me that there was some bias. Sometimes uh, artists who, uh, especially young groups, who were applying for the first time would ask, would, would be very upfront about what their inadequacies were and how they were challenged by the process. And I think sometimes those uh, officers uh, folded that information in to their assessment and then they also had they were friends with some other of the other uh, of the more established theater companies and so things like that would just happen do you remember at this time whether the officers of the Canada council were all white they were all white are they more representative now do you know I have no idea I, I, I'm I not know. I'm not applying for grants right now so I don't know but what I do know is that um, the less transparent a process is the more it's uh, prone and, and vulnerable to um, interference that can't be identified and and it, and and that's just not it's just not healthy. Were you paid when you were on these committees? Yeah, we got honorariums. Yeah. Honorarium? Yeah. Decent honorarium? Yeah, it was pretty decent. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah okay. No, and it was hard work. It was work. Yeah. Um, and it, it did lead also to the equity office becoming kind of um, established on a, a more permanent basis. I don't know if that equity office is still there, but we weren't sure whether that equity officer was only going to be on for the term of our committee and then gone, but but uh, it continued and and I think that the that it did make a difference. Like we, there are some. There's still a ways to go. I don't know how many of the companies, um, you know, companies like Obsidian, um, are are fairly strong now and and it, in under the previous system, I don't know if it would have survived. You know?